most of the time. I send these postcards from Papa John in the morning, and it's been a delight to be able to do that. But tonight, there's something on my heart that I can't seem to shake off, and I sense it might be for a lot of us that maybe even right now, going through what St. John of the Cross called the dark night of the soul. Oh, we know the world is filled with anxiety and the world is filled with fear right now. And we know that that gives us the opportunity to express hope, to share truth and to show love because we have the answer. Jesus the Christ, the Prince of Peace, the coming King. We know that to be so. And yet, I think there's some of us that may be reluctant to share the good news of the fact that the victory is won and the kingdom will come because we feel disqualified. We don't feel like we have the right to share the good news because we're aware of a sin in our own lives, an inconsistency, something which we're stumbling with or maybe in bondage to. And I think the enemy might be whispering in our ears saying, you can't talk about Jesus. You can't share your testimony because there's wounds in your own life. There's stuff that you're going through. There's inconsistencies. Well, in John chapter 20, that night in the upper room on that Easter Sunday, Jesus appeared miraculously to the disciples and said, peace be unto you. And they were blown away and you know the story. But one of them wasn't there that night, and that was, of course, Thomas. And when he heard reports that Jesus had risen from the dead and appeared to the other disciples, he was doubtful. He was skeptical. And he said, unless I can put my finger in the prints, the nail prints in his feet and in his hands, and put my finger in the hole in his side, I'm not going to believe. It was a week later when they were in the same upper room that Jesus suddenly, miraculously, wondrously appeared to them again. Only this time Thomas was there. And Jesus, I think, with a twinkle in his eye and a smile on his face, said, Thomas, Thomas, touch my wounds. And Thomas saw the resurrected reality and the wounds that Jesus' body bore that night, you see. And he fell at Jesus' feet and said, My Lord and my God. Now, obviously, as you all know, that scenario is a powerful indication, declaration of the reality of Jesus' resurrection. Here you have one that was doubting the veracity of the story that Jesus had risen. But then he saw the resurrected Savior and he saw the wounds in the hands, side, and feet of Jesus. And Thomas became a believer. Obviously, that's the main point of the story. But there's a subtext. There's something else that I want to share with you. And this won't be long but I hope you really will grab it. It shows us something and showed Thomas something that you can minister powerful testimony being both resurrected and wounded. Jesus was resurrected and he was wounded. Notice he didn't say, Jesus didn't say, touch my scars. He said, touch my wounds. He didn't say, touch my scars, as though, hey, that wound is healed up. That 
difficulty is now resolved. That wound is no longer in play because it's scarred over. Hey, Jesus said, touch my wounds. Those kinds of wounds don't heal up and scar over in a week. Y'all know that. So if you have ears to understand this tonight, you that might be in a dark night of the soul, feeling like you're not qualified to share, even though these days afford great opportunity for us to say others might be afraid and panicky, but we have the hope of heaven. We have the peace of Christ dwelling in our hearts. And you might be sidelined from that, or you might feel like I have no right to say anything because people know the people that I live with, or the people that I work with, or the people that know me, they see huge wounds, inconsistencies, uh, problems, uh, difficulties. Uh, they see wounds, wounds that have been caused by sin. Jesus' wounds were caused by sin. Oh, it wasn't his sin. It was our sin that caused those wounds. We also have wounds from sin, and it is our sin. But we also have the resurrected life. Christ lives in us. He has given salvation to us. And the gospel is most effectively shared, I think, when people like you and me readily acknowledge our wounds, our inconsistencies, our inadequacies. Hey, we are wounded, not just scars from the past, a year ago or 10 years back, but wounds in the present stuff that still is painful or stuff that still is ugly or stuff that still hasn't healed or been resolved or not yet delivered from or whatever it might be. But this is the thing, and I'm almost through, but I just felt compelled to share it with you tonight. Hey, that's the story. We're resurrected and we're wounded simultaneously. We have a new life in Christ, but we still have holes in our side, our hands, our feet, the things we do with our hands, perhaps, or the places we've walked with these feet, maybe, or the things that are going on inside of you or inside of me. The enemy, Satan, would say, you have no right to share with anybody. Look at those inadequacies those holes in your personality, those wounds, not scars. Scars have been resolved. Scars have been healed over. Look at those wounds, Satan will say. You have no right to speak out. You have no right to believe that the Lord is going to bless you in surprising ways or use you impactingly in these days. Because look, look at the wounds. Satan will say, but you need to know the story of John chapter 20. Jesus shows us its resurrection and wounds. Resurrection, new life, miraculously. We're born again. But yes, wounds, still issues, inconsistencies, and the message we have to the doubters, to the Thomases. Guess what? He loves you, and love covers a multitude of sin. You're forgiven. When we become believers, it's not that we're perfect. It's that we're perfectly forgiven. That's the gospel. The gospel is spoken 
and shared and communicated most effectively by people who acknowledge their wounds, not scars from the past, oh, that too, but the wounds that we bear presently, self-inflicted wounds, repercussions of sin or inconsistency, but, but where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Grace did much more abound. That's the message of Romans. That's the message of the gospel. And that's the message that Jesus showed his boys that night in the upper room to one that was cynical, dubious, and doubtful. Thomas, touch not my scars, my wounds. I'm resurrected. I'm also wounded. That's my story, your story. That's our story. And I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so, hey, come out of the dark. Walk in the light. Share the truth. It's not about your togetherness. It's about the power of what he did for you redemptively on the cross of Calvary and his resurrected presence, which will walk with you and work changes in you slowly but surely. In the meantime, he's got it covered. The blood cleanses. So brother, sister, hey, tonight, Maybe you're in that dark night of condemnation, introspection, feeling inadequate. Don't you know that those things which are bothering you can be the very things that can be used powerfully if you'll just share them openly? Yes, I'm wounded, but I'm also resurrected. Share your story. God uses it all, not just the victories, not just the blessings that come our way, but the wounds, he uses that too to present the gospel, the good news for people that know that they're wounded too. God bless you and be with you. Hey, the Lord wants to use you today no matter what your situation is. So just get ready to get blessed and get ready to be used in Jesus' name. Amen.